Hello, Quincy. My name's Eileen Fontenot, and I'm a librarian at the Thomas Crane Public Library. And today I'm with the Chrysalis Trio, um, a musical group who'll be performing at the main library on Saturday, December 7th, from 3 to 4 p.m. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to have you. Um, so, um, we are going to be hearing some familiar tunes, is that correct? Right. Okay. Um, could you describe a bit about oh, what can people can expect during this kind of like pop-up uh, uh, performance? Sure. Well, we're going to do a program of traditional Christmas music. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll be on oboe, Sally's on oboe, and Christina's on, on uh, bassoon. These mm -hmm. are all like a family of double reed instruments. Okay. And it's, uh, it's an unusual combination that you don't see very often. And a lot of people have never really seen an oboe or heard an oboe live, although if you hear it, it's a familiar sound. You'll hear it often if you know what to listen for in soundtracks, okay. et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so people, uh, we just want people to come to listen to the nice music that they'll mm -hmm. recognize mm -hmm. and maybe uh, stop and, and you know, visit with us mm -hmm. and we can show our instrument. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know, something mm -hmm. that I think they'll enjoy. Yeah. So w you'll be in our atrium, which is a, a large space. Right. It'll be a, probably a nice sound and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, exactly. So, um, what exactly prompted you guys to form this trio with these double reed instruments, which I've never really heard of people playing together before? So we met mm -hmm. during chamber music rehearsals, mm -hmm. right? Yes. About about approximately a year ago, and we thought it would be a nice idea mm -hmm. to get together and just see what the sound would be like, mm -hmm. because you say it's not common. Right. So um, we thought it could either go one or two ways. Mm -hmm. It could either sound really nice or really awful <laughs> because they're, they're really strong <laughs> instruments, you know, mm -hmm. and it actually, it sounds really nice. I think yeah. people are going to really enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what sort of songs do you, can you give us a little, like, Yes. Of we're going to play, um, one of the songs that we're going to do for you in a moment is mm -hmm. A Little Town of Bethlehem. And uh -huh. one reason that I like that is uh -huh. because I have a recording that anyone can look up on YouTube. It's um, by the Phil Philadelphia Orchestra under Eugene Ormandy. So he would have been the conductor right around the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. That time frame is significant because that was when Marcel Tabitot was the principal oboist, and he's the father of all the American <laughs> oboe playing. So his, he, de he was a Frenchman, but he developed an American style uh -huh. that's um, what is taught now throughout the, throughout the country. There's no guarantee that that style is going to live forever, though, so it's, we're kind of mm -hmm. keeping that alive. Right. As I said, the oboe is not very common, so there's mm -hmm. a handful of us around. Right. So it's, it's, um, that's why that piece is significant mm -hmm. for me, because it's such a beautiful version nice. that I'm familiar with. Are you all from Boston area, or are you play in Boston? Um, we're all from the South Shore. Oh, okay. I'm from Norwell. Chris is from Weymouth, mm -hmm. and Sally's I'm from, from Hingham. Hingham. Oh, okay, yeah. And we rehearse in Sally's uh, living room <laughs> <laughs> every Saturday in Hingham. Sally Sorry. and Chris, you are both oboists, huh? and Chris also. You're mm -hmm. the a bassoonist, right? Correct. Okay. Um, so what, going all of you, um, what prompted you to take up this instrument mm -hmm. and what it, what how exciting is it for you to, to do that? Okay, I can tell you a story okay. about that. <laughs> okay. uh, I got married pretty young, but uh -huh. not terribly young, and my husband told me to do it. Oh, really? <laughs> 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 no, it's that um, uh, after um, we got married, he's a very good pianist. Oh, okay. And yeah. so we wanted to have something to do together. Oh, that's And that has worked out very nicely. Right, and right. so I took it up and... Mm -hmm. and uh, I was a little behind because I wasn't in fourth grade. Right. I got married young, but not that not young. The, not, <laughs> not fourth grade young. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. And so I love it. I oh, love you it. do? It's, it's yeah. a really interesting uh, lifetime mm -hmm. activity. Right. And you've played in like chamber um, groups before yeah. and, and everything uh, before you guys met up and everything. The Plymouth Philharmonic mm -hmm. and uh, Quincy Orchestra. Mm -hmm. and, a Weymouth Orchestra and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And, and pit work is also fun. And I bet Chris, pit work? you two guys have done mm -hmm. that too. That's like yes. the Playing big for group. Shows. Oh, okay, okay. Show. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Like for Sweeney Todd. Oh, I see, I see. Children like, of Eden and stuff like, like that. Theater. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm a little different. I yeah. started in sixth grade and I had never heard of an oboe before. I just, mm -hmm. I got a record and listened to the different instruments and I like that sound. Mm -hmm. It's a very unique sound, like I said, and it's, um, I played it, I was real serious about it all the way through college. I got a music degree, and then I moved out to Boston. I grew up in Missouri mm -hmm. um, to work for a couple of years and to save up to go to graduate school. But I got a job at State Street Bank when they were, this is 97, when they were hiring a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still there now. So after a, couple, after a couple of years, I just gave up on graduate school. I never actually, I, the oboe I hadn't mm -hmm. played in about 20 years until about three or four years ago, I took it back out. Oh, yeah. So I've only been back into it 
um, recently, but then I met these two just putting some feelers out, and then mm -hmm. I found out that they had this some uh, ch chamber music meetings, mm -hmm. and that's how we, that's we all came all together. Came together. Yeah. Okay. Did you have to ask somebody, like a teacher, like, what is this instrument, you know, <laughs> did you know, like... No, I got it on a record. It, okay. was, a, it was Big Bird Discovers the Orchestra. You can look at that oh, online now. Oh, nice. that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you can still hear that on YouTube now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> and I'd never heard of it. Yeah. I thought, that's a great sound, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm going to do that. That's sweet. So what about you? Well, like mm -hmm. bassoon and oboe, mm -hmm. most people don't start out with that particular instrument. Mm -hmm. I started in fourth grade playing the flute. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Mm -hmm. But I wanted more. So mm -hmm. I tried a couple of different instruments. I tried oboe. Mm -hmm. um, I liked it, but didn't love it. Mm -hmm. um, and I was fortunate uh, when I was young. I had a very supportive music school mm -hmm. uh, in Weymouth. And they said, hey, you know, we, we've got this scholarship. You can go take lessons at the South Shore Conservatory. Mm -hmm. And we'll get your bassoon. And you can just take lessons mm -hmm. and see if it works. Mm -hmm. And I did, and I loved it. Yeah. In fact, through high school, I took a lot of lessons, mm -hmm. got involved in a lot of local um, in organizations in Boston. So I decided to major it in school and mm -hmm. went to college for music. Okay. Um, hard yeah. industry to make a living. Right. So um, like Chris, I work for a bank, okay. um, <laughs> but enjoy playing music yeah. with really talented people um, that wonderful. take music very seriously. Yeah. And it, it's a, a lot of fun to play with right. them. Yeah. What about the bassoon that you liked better than the oboe? Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I know. Yeah. I don't what know if we've say? talked about this yet. <laughs> oh, this is drama. <laughs> I think right. the, the bassoon is really the base uh -huh. of the double reeds. It's mm -hmm. really the supporting. It's like the trombone or tuba mm -hmm. of uh, um, an orchestra. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's just a little bit more fun. Mm -hmm. um, you really. Uh, you get a lot of diversity in terms of different pieces you can play. Mm -hmm. You can be in quintet, you can be in orchestras, and mm -hmm. who you can be in a wind trio with oboes I'll and say <laughs> yeah. Sally and yeah. I started with a couple of rehearsals as a duet, mm -hmm. and when Christine came in, it added a whole new dimension oh, to our sound. It was yeah. definitely right. the missing piece, yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So, can you explain to me double reeds versus single reeds, yes. and mm -hmm. how does that work? Yeah, so a clarinet mm. would be a single reed. It, oh. it has a plastic mouthpiece, and then the, the, a flat reed just kind of sits on top of it and mm -hmm. gets, you know, attached with a metal binder. Okay. Whereas with a double reed, you've got two pieces of the, you know, the bamboo that you tie them together onto uh -huh. a cork. Okay. And then, mm. uh, you know, most oboe and bassoon players will make their own reeds because uh -huh. it's, it's such an integral part of the sound. You know, what you do when you um, make that read mm -hmm. will influence how your instrument sounds. Okay. So you're very particular and you want it to sound a certain way, you're going to make your own. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had no idea it was that the, Yeah, you know, I've, I've, I, make, I, make, I make my own and I thought about going into a business, but the problem is that I'm so slow and I'm so particular <laughs> about it that I would be making like probably $2 yeah. an hour. So <laughs> like I kind of gave mind. up on that idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is going to be a, a very fun um, little performance and I, I can't wait to, to see it. Um, so I hope everybody here in Quincy comes on uh, Saturday, December 7th from 3 to 4 p.m. in our atrium at the main library to check out this wonderful performance. Um, and now we're going to have a little sample of what you can expect. Mm -hmm. 